Okay, so here I am making a bunch of videos on New Year's Eve. The irony is that the video you're about to watch was filmed and produced for the better part before Christmas. This video was, as you'll see soon, clearly supposed to come out before Christmas, before many holidays that are celebrated around this time of year. And lo and behold, here I am. I'm making an intro to explain what happened to you uh, because I've just been insanely busy and haven't really have not I have not I can't talk I have not had the time to finish making and putting out this video so I'm sort of explaining myself also I made a few mistakes with the identification of my isopods but those are corrected in the video as you'll see there's the armadillidium and it was supposed to be armadillo for the genus and then the for whatever reason i thought yellow pandas were actually a cuberis species part of that genus they're definitely not and they have never been it's all corrected in the video so bear with me in any case guys happy new year i'm actually gonna have a new year's video probably tomorrow or today I guess for the first day of the new year depending where you're from but this video was intended for your eyes to behold during the holiday season so I hope you can forgive me for the delay uh, without further ado I'm just gonna end the intro to the intro that leads into a video so thanks so much for watching thanks for your support thanks for your understanding enjoy the video Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Wow, so bright! Oh, light ring eyes, oh, light ring eyes. Okay, you must all be getting ready for your holiday season or festivities, whether you're religious or not, whether you believe in a holiday that is coming up. For those of you celebrating Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. For those of you following the winter solstice, for those of you celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. This is going to be my video. I won't be having another video till after Christmas. So Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy everyone. Just hope you're doing fantastic. And I hope you enjoyed my version of trying to be festive. I tried. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at my isopod collection because I've gone from maybe having three or four species to well over 30. So I got a whole bunch of other isopods and I'm really excited to show them all to you. Uh, most of them came from the Ham Expo over in Germany. So I just wanted to show you guys the full collection and it's full force at this point. I know that all of you guys have been requesting specific care videos and I'm definitely going to be doing that species specific care videos on all the isopods and obviously they're not going to be perfect but it's going to be how I successfully keep my animals and you can take from it what you will and hopefully learn something. For now though, I'm going to be doing a update on my whole collection. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's go ahead and take a look at my whole isopod collection. So the first species we're gonna be looking at here are my Armadillidium granulatum. Which are very interesting species. Here's a bunch of them hiding over here, eating some cabbage. Ooh, that one has some pretty high yellow expression. Hey, little one. Alright. Mm, so those are those guys. So those are the granulatums. Next up we have the Armadillidium gestroi or gestroi. These ones came a lot younger, so they are arguably one of the largest members of the Armadillidium genus in the hobby, but mine are still quite young, so they've got some growing to do. But check out that beautiful coloration. It's kind of funny, Tempest was making fun of me. These two species she thinks just look like Armadillidium vulgar. You find outside. She wasn't too impressed by these guys, but I think they're really cool looking. Hi, buddy. 
you digging away in your in your rotting wood I will not disturb you. So as you can see here in the enclosure there's lots of leaf matter my soil mixes for most species consist of some organic potting soil mix with lots of compost in it black earth which is sort of the same thing this one here is molting they do it in half, so you'll see one half mold first and then the other. Uh, sorry, as I was saying about the substrate, there's also some... Um, that is not that is a little scaper, baby. Uh, some coconut core, uh, some horticultural charcoal, and then also some sphagnum moss, cocoa bark, actual bark and not just um, the cocoa fiber. You can see the pieces like this. And then there's some peat moss. Sorry if I said that already. I don't think I did. I missed it if I did. And uh, yeah, that's sort of the fundamental. Uh, and then lots of, sorry, broken up decaying wood and cork barks and rounds to hide under. So then from there, the humidity is kept relative to what each different species needs and then also ventilation is cut in a certain way that's conducive to each species requirements. Awesome! Let's look at the next guys. Next we're gonna look at the Armadillidium nasatum peach morphs. These guys are doing amazing. I put a huge piece of Asian cabbage in here yesterday night and these guys have just totally eaten it all up. I know that there's a lot of them under this quirk. Uh, that's just some cuttlefish bone for calcium. Usually there's a bunch. Surprisingly, there aren't too many here right now. But here you can see a few youngins, some springtails moving around between them. Yeah, they're beautiful. So the natural form of this species is uh, just sort of like a solid gray color, but you can kind of see them there. These ones are the peach variety. And a lot of them are going to be hiding. Oh, hello, some tiny little mankai. A lot of them are going to be hiding here, too. There's a real small mankai. Oh my goodness, my heart. Hello, sweet thing. It's like the size of a springtail. Alright guys, they're probably all just like, oh my god, what's going on? There you go, see some of the charcoal? Alright. We'll put these guys away. Move on to the next species. Next up, as I always say, one of my favorites is the classic... Armadillidium maculatum, the zebra isopod. Ah oh, man, no matter how common these are, you just can't get tired of them. The contrast, the coloration, it's just extraordinary. I mean, what a beautiful isopod, honestly. Such a beautiful animal. There's a little something on his back there. Now, as I was saying, this culture's popping out some interesting morphs. There are chocolate zebras in here and some high pattern ones. So we have these guys that have reduced dark and uh, there's a chocolate. You can kind of see it's a bit lighter than the rest. I haven't found too many chocolates that are larger yet. Actually, there's one here. You can see them right there. See how the rest are black but this one here is actually Sort of a lighter coloration. Hello. So that's one of the ones I'm going to eventually isolate and have it because it does actually prove true. So if you isolate all those ones, they'll just produce that color. There's another one. He's just a bit lighter than the rest of them. Come back! Anyways, so this is the uh, culture of 
Armadillidium maculatum. And then one of the newer cultures that I just got recently is actually also another culture of Armadillidium maculatum. But this one goes by line two. And let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the Armadillidium maculatum France line two. These are another type of the maculatum. This line of maculatum is supposedly one that gets larger than the rest. So I figured, hey, why not? I really do like the maculatums. I might as well see what is to be made of this line and, you know, have a second line of them and see how these do. So far I don't find that they're that different, but I think it's neat. They weren't very expensive, so I figured might as well give them a shot. Maybe some neat morphs will pop up in them too. Cool stuff. Armadillidium maculatum France line 2. Next we have a much smaller culture. This is the Armadillidium paracé or paracé. Um, this was a gift from Martin and Amanda of Tarantula Canada, so I'd like to warmly thank them again for these beautiful little isopods. You'll see right away that they almost look like a Nagaris nasatum, uh, but these are very much an Armadillidium species. They almost look like a small Cubaris too, which is super cool. But they are a beautiful little Armadillidium species that I'm super excited to have be part of the collection. So once this group gets booming a little bit, we'll certainly move them into a larger bin. But for now, since there's so few of them, they'll do just fine in here. But look at the beautiful contrast and patterning of these animals. That's the beauty of the isopods. It's not always just about color. The morphology, the rustic or uh, cryptic coloration and pattern, it's all really quite something with these animals. Let's take a look at those guys. Look at those little guys hanging out. Here are a few more of them. Beautiful. Next we have one of my favorite Armadillidium species. This is the Officinalis grease variety. You'll see that the Armadillidium Officinalis grease and Spain and Israel are probably the most common localities of this species you're going to find the hobby, with Spain probably being the most common of the three. Now look at these little guys, they're little tanks. Some people might say, oh they just look like Armadillidium vulgar, but really they don't. They're quite smooth and they're very large isopods. Um, they're quite thick as well, so allow me to show you the reference. Oh, hey little ones. So my hands are getting in here. Like, they're, they're decent size, guys. I don't know if you can kind of make that out, but they're very tank-like. I really like them. They're like a cool cross between the Maculatums and a Vulgare, but a must-have species for sure. They are super cool. Now as the video progresses, feel free to let me know down below which is your favorite species that you're seeing in the video. It'd be cool to see and then you know people can vote underneath the comments and let's see what everybody likes the most. It'd be interesting to see. My little cutie. Oh my goodness. I gotta say, you gotta love an isopod that rolls up into a ball. Hello? You gonna come out for us? Hi. There we go. Hi. Little weirdos. So I'm just gonna put that back, and again we have a nice piece of cabbage for them to eat. You see that there? All right. Next we have another cool species. This is the Armadillidium species albino Japan. I assume this is some sort of morph of vulgar found in Japan, but I can't say for certain. Right away you'll see a small individual here. Um, so these are a little interesting. They do gain some color as they age. 
So they're not exactly like a magic potion or a T positive or a negative albino. They just sort of, I don't know how to explain them, but here they are. You can see they do have some coloration, but they're very neat little ones. Hello. They were just hanging out here and nibbling on some tasty cabbage by the looks of it. And it seems like they're almost done too. So as you can see the more mature animals develop a little bit of coloration. Whereas a lot of the younger ones stay pretty light. So they do darken a bit with age, which is not so consistent with the other albino varieties that I've seen. Beautiful, and you can see all the rotting wood in here. They love it. Excellent. Great. Next up we have the Armadillidium klugi montenegros, which are very colorful species of isopod, as you can see. They're these gorgeous red coloration with the beautiful black and yellow down the middle with white dots. Gorgeous, gorgeous isopods. Here you can see some mankai feeding on what's left of the cabbage. I did recently re I did reset up. I did redo the setup for these guys. So it is a bit moister than I would usually have it. I keep them a bit drier and they also like to be relatively warm. So room temperature is okay for them, but they do like warm temperatures. So it can be a bit warmer if you like. Here's a few. These are beautiful isopods. So you're going to see the Warneri later, the um, Armadillidium Warneri, not to be mistaken with Porcilio Warneri, which you will also see later because I was lucky enough to get some of them. Um, the main difference between these and the Armadillidium Warneri is that the middle white dots, or sorry, well, I kind of gave it away, the middle dots are also white and there isn't yellow there. So. Probably a few down here too. Yeah, some more young and adults. They're all over the place in that leaf litter. So those are the Montenegros. The Armadillidium Klugi Montenegros. Beautiful. Lastly for the Armadillidiums is the Warner Eye like I was just discussing about. Here you can see it. This is one of them. Uh, these ones are quite light in color. I think it's because a lot of them are molting, but I could be wrong. Um, they could also just be a lighter form of the species, but no, here's here's one. Come back, don't run away, little one. Won't bug them too much. Let them do their thing. All right, next we have the Atlantosia floridana, the Florida fast isopods. First you're gonna see lots of springtails in this enclosure because these guys like to be a lot moister or wetter. So these isopods uh, are going to have a habitat that's really conducive to the springtails being happy. So here you can see they almost look like more of an aquatic isopod. Very, very fast. Where are you going? Yeah, pretty, pretty quick little guys. There's a mankai among the springtails. There are probably a few more of these guys hiding, like in here. Ah, look at them, they're freaking out. Alright guys, I'll let you be, sorry. Cool. 
set this back down and let them do their thing. All right, guys, let's move on to the Cubaris genus. Next up, we have the Cubaris Marina, which is a very, very cute uh, smaller species here. I really like these guys. They're so neat. Take a look at these little cuties. They have that distinct Cubaris look to them. You can see the little face. Oh, where are you going? Come back. Yep. Awesome. So there's quite a few in here. Um, they are fresh arrivals. But I did already see, I think, a few Mankai. So that's really nice. Hopefully they'll establish themselves well soon. Hi right, gang, do your thing, I won't interrupt. Let you go back here. Perfect. Cubaris Marina. Next up, you're going to see a series of Cubaris species that are part of the genus but really undescribed or unnamed as of now. These are very rare isobots. Cubaris amber ducky is actually um, said to be only owned by a handful of people around the world. It was recently discovered in Thailand. So these isopods are particularly rare and they recently were brought over to Canada. So I have a group of them and I'm also, I've also offered them to a few other hobbyists that are picking them up soon. So this is the Amber Ducky Isopod and you really need to see these animals in person to appreciate what they look like. Um, they are quite something. They're very round and they truly just look like they're glowing in person. They're really really special. So um, this is their enclosure. They've been munching on some of the cabbage. They also have some rotting wood that a lot of them are hiding under. A little bit of cuttlefish bone. There is some more here hiding. Hi guys. And oh yeah and when they're afraid they roll up into these little like disc balls. Kind of rolled him away so he wouldn't be under the end that comes down. Oh, go, 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 go. Run, 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 run. Go, go, go. Look at that little guy. Bye. So, yeah, those are the amber duckies. They're very, very cute. Beautiful little isopods. Next we have the Cubaris Rubber Ducky, which is infamously one of the most sought after isopods in the hobby currently. Um, these isopods get their name from their infamously adorable appearance. I will show you right now exactly why they call them the Rubber Ducky Isopod. So here you can see that this animal appears to have a little orange bill on its face lending it the funny and cute marketable name, Cubaris Rubber Ducky. So this is one of my two colonies of these animals. I've set up two bins. Mind you, both are being housed pretty similarly. Um, just want to see if they thrive better one way than the other. They seem to be doing really well so far. I did see some Mankai in here already. Let's see if I can find a few to show you. Um, can't remember if it was this enclosure or not, or another one that had the Mankai. Mine, but that being said, I, I have seen them in both. But yeah, here they are, enjoying some wood. Again, you can see where they get their name from. Beautiful little isopods. 
very expensive, unfortunately, so not the kind of isopod you'd want to have as a cleanup crew in your tank by any means. I keep seeing people posting about them saying, oh, I'd love to have these cleaning in my crested gecko enclosure. It's like, well, buddy, that's an expensive cleanup crew. You clearly don't know how expensive these animals are if you're considering using them to clean your enclosures. Oh my gosh, little, little junior. Hey buddy. Hello, little lady. Oh! Nope, that was a springtail, my bad. These guys are eating a molt. Yeah. So, I will gently put these guys away. Oh, here we go. There is a little mankai. This is a baby rubber ducky isopod cruising along the floor. Next to a frightened parent. You're okay, don't be afraid. Come on out. Come on out. Look, your friend's coming to say, hey dude, chill. Nothing to be worried about. Let's see how these two interact. He's like, uh, buddy, you okay? I'm out of here. This guy's a weirdo. Well, anyways, I'm gonna gently pick this up and show you guys underneath. There's a bunch more. They're doing really good. So. We shall let them get back to what they were doing. We'll go through it more in the tutorial when I decide to cover the rubber ducky care. But one thing about the rubber duckies is that they originate from the sides of a few caves in Thailand. And these are limestone caves. So a few of the people that are very successful with this species have attributed their success to supplementing their substrate and animals with calcium carbonate or horticultural lime, but there are certain forms of it you can't use. From a few people I spoke to, they're basically using the human grade calcium carbonate supplement, and this is derived of pure limestone food grade. So what I do is mix a few teaspoons of this into my substrate and then also leave one little corner a little extra uh, powdery, if you will. I mix it in so that you can actually see tiny little bits of calcium in that corner, and that allows the animals to have the opportunity to go over there and feed on the limestone and gain a bit of supplementation the way they, the way they would uh, feeding on that lime cave. Uh, the cave's stone back in Thailand, if that makes sense. So hopefully that'll make a big difference for them in the way they thrive. So I was eager to show you guys some more mankai footage. So here's another bin of duckies. And you can see here a fresh little group of mankai have been released by one of the females. There's quite a decent amount of mankai in this corner here. Hey guys. Holy macaroni cuteness overload. Well, we'll let them go do their thing. A lot of them will just disappear into the bedding and won't come back again till they're of a little bit more of a decent size. I find that tends to be the case with a lot of species. I'll, I'll say to myself, you know, I don't see any mankai. This is kind of concerning me. And then all of a sudden, um, like a month or two later, you just have these tiny little isopods that have a bit more size and color, like for example this one here. Who decided to just peace out on me. Thanks a lot. Oh here. Here are some. This little one's developed a bit more color now. There's a little ducky too. Gently put that guy back. There's another adult. 
But yeah, these guys are definitely one of my favorite isopod species I keep. Like, they just look so interesting, too. And then there's a bunch of adults in there again. Doing great. And some more mankai. Which is something we like to see, of course. Awesome. Well, let's put these guys away and move on to the next neat species. Next up, we have the Cubaris blonde ducky, which is very similar in appearance to the standard rubber ducky. The blonde duckies are just sort of a different coloration, see? And these are really neat as well, so they don't have that gray color, they're just very light in coloration. And these two are found inside and around a cave in Thailand, limestone cave, so they also get the calcium carbonate derived from lime supplement. Most of my group, I bought 20 of them, are going to be hiding under this piece of wood. Hoping to have some mankai soon. There they are. They are very beautiful. Some of them are digging in here. Yeah, they seem pretty happy. Beautiful. Lastly for the Cubaris, we have the Cubaris Yellow Panda, which is a very interesting looking isopod species. So here we have one of them. They're very neat. Some beautiful yellows and black. These isopods are super active and quick. Um, you'll see them moving through the leaves and they just, they're like go, go, go all the time. They kind of remind me of um, powder blues and the way that they move so fast. But here they are just feeding on the leaves. Uh, but they, they do move quite quickly when they're ready to. They're not particularly large, but they are very beautiful. Some really cool coloration. Most of them tend to hang out in the leaves, surprisingly. Uh, they don't necessarily spend a lot of time under the wood. A few might, but most of them seem to like foraging through the leaf matter. And I also got 20 of these, so there should be 20 in this enclosure. Fingers crossed that we get some mankai, because they're really neat, and again, a very rare and uncommon species. Awesome. Next species we'll be looking at are the Nagaris cristatus, the dwarf gray or dwarf gray striped isopods. These guys are usually hiding under the leaf litter and they tend to sort of burrow deeper into the substrate as well. Let's see if I can find one for you and show you guys that animal in a second. So there are quite a few in here but they do an excellent job of hiding. Um, I have seen mankai as well but there you go. It's actually a pretty decent clip when compared to last video. Uh, it was hard to even find one at all. So those are the Nigris cristatus, and there's quite a few just kind of hiding in here, and you can see the they've been nibbling on the leaves as well. Awesome. So I'll fix this up a bit. And let that wee one be. And they also have some cabbage, as you can see. Next we're going to be looking at the Porcilio genus. These are my Porcilio ornatus 
high yellows. So normally they're sort of a black or gray color, and these are a yellow morph, which are quite beautiful. Really nice looking isopods here. Um, that one's feeding on some cabbage. There's a few others on the leaf litter hanging out. They don't like it too, too wet. They do like to have a bit more dryness. So you can see them moving around there. And then there's a few under the wood. This is a new species I recently acquired. Um, they came from Ham Expo. And I'm really looking forward to culturing them. Hopefully they'll do really well. Now, some of you may remember my last isopod update video where I foolishly explained that I thought the Porcilio Magnificus Mankai in here were darker prior to a, to a molt. Those individuals have since grown and shown their true colors. I don't know how they got in here. Honestly, it must have been one individual. But I somehow have Porcilio Noides Prenosis, the powder blue isopods in here and they are like just thriving in full force it's kind of annoying I'm planning on moving all my Magnificus out of the enclosure they don't seem to be out competing each other by any means but the powder blues definitely grow and breed much more quickly than the Magnificus and they will as such get out competed eventually I mean look at the substrate is just crawling with mankai and adults. Um, it was kind of funny. I talked to my friend Trevor about it online. He was like, man, I do not think those are um, Magnificus mankai. And you know what? They certainly were not. However, the Magnificus themselves are doing really well. Uh, there you go, a bunch of the powder blues again. There are lots of Magnificus mankai in the enclosure. Uh, plenty are hiding away in here, so they are cohabiting quite well. I have, you know, like, but I don't know what goes on here. Like, for all I know, the the uh, powder blues are picking on the mankai and consuming them also quickly without me knowing. So, Magnificus are going to be getting rehoused soon because that's the only that's the best way I can think of how to do it. There's no way I'm picking out all the powder blue, so this is going to become a powder blue culture, and the Magnificus will be coming out soon. So maybe I'll do a video about the uh, pain in the butt that's going to be. All right, so those are the Magnificus, and I guess also the powder blues now, another species I unintentionally cultured. Mind you, though, they are quite beautiful. There's something to be said about that. They're 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 nice isopods too. So it's kind of a win-win situation. It's not too bad. Now, some of you may recall I was having some trouble with my Porcilio Bolivari. I've tried setting them up a different way now. Uh, yes, the enclosure is a little moist, but I'm sort of letting it dry out over time. Um, I did end up getting a few more of these animals in hopes to sort of revamp the colony. I haven't checked on them in the last day or two. I didn't want to disturb them, so hopefully they're doing okay in here. But I've added a lot more uh, loose wood and such. For them to feed on. Here they are. These are the Porcilio bolivari. They're one of my absolute all-time favorite isopod species. They look like little trilobites. Uh, I have quite a few females in here, which is what I was able to get. I had a die-off, and unfortunately most of the ones that were dying were female, so I had all these males. And that's obviously a bit of a problem. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, these ones seem to be doing a lot better, so let's cross our fingers that we'll walk into some Mankai sometime, because that would be nice, wouldn't it? Here's a little young male. There's a, there's a few females there, or a male and female. But yeah, they're, they're very neat looking isopod, as you can see. For sure the trickiest. I I don't think I've kept any species before that's given me as much trouble as these. Literally my last attempt, I think I had bought 12 and they all sort of just started dropping randomly. I thought I had them in check and then you walk in like a few weeks later and there's another dead one or two. I don't know what I was doing and I will say my substrate was not as 
plentiful before. So I'm hoping that this will help maintain the gradients of uh, humidity and temperature. And again, I, I'm, I've set them up a bit differently using Martin Gamash's from Torrential Canada's advice because his culture is just thriving. It's actually ridiculous. It looks like one of my Porcelio Levis enclosures. So I'm hoping this will do the trick. All right, let's move on. Lots of Porcelio species to show you still. Next up here we have my lovely Porcelio Expansus. These, these are the white form Expansus. They are a gorgeous contrast isopod. Um, these guys get relatively large and they like to be kept quite dry. Um, I'm hoping to get the orange form Expansus in the coming months. I'd really like to get my hands on some of those. It's probably one of my favorite isopods of all time. Uh, but these ones are doing really well. I mean, everyone's doing really well. I would say so otherwise. Um, there are several manka in here. I've noticed they're breeding quite well. Now all of a sudden, most of them are hanging out on the moist or humid side. Let's see if I can find a few. Oh, there is one. You can see them among the springtails. And they're often just like under pieces of wood too. Oh no, that's a different one there. They do really like their decaying wood, aside from the cabbage and other things I feed them. Some bee pollen, a little bit of uh, fish food. I usually use pellets for them. Oh, hello. Ah, sorry. But yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Look at that isopod. And these aren't adults. They are breeding size, but they're, they'll still get bigger than that. They definitely get up there in size. Wonderful, wonderful. So, we'll let those guys be. Again, they're kept a lot drier than most species, but they do still have a moist side and a dry side. But overall, I probably keep these guys drier than most of my isopods, uh, maybe up to par with Hoffman Segi, which you'll see soon. These are an interesting new project. These are my Porcilio Levis Gray or Wild Type. So you'll see the dairy cows, um, you'll see the oranges, milk backs, all sorts of different morphs. But you never really see where they all came from, right? These are the Porcilio Levis Wild Types. So these are supposed to look the way they do in the wild. And there you go. So I have a small culture of these, and I'm really looking forward to. Um, culturing them. It's actually quite lovely. Okay, fine. Sorry. Let's move on. These here are super cool. So this is a form of Porcilio Levis. These are the Porcilio Levis Orange. So these here are Orange Levis. They kind of remind you of an orange scaber, except they get much larger, obviously, because the Levis are relatively large-sized isopod. I have a starter culture of these, and I'm really looking forward to them reproducing and taking over this enclosure. Hello there. I'm not sure where the rest are hiding, but there are several in here. We'll just let them do their thing. Oh, here's another. Let you take a look. Porcilio Levis Orange. Next we have the Porcilio Levis White, which is where you select or remove, where you essentially take away all the dairy cow Levis that have the least amount of expression of uh, black patterning to get these white animals. So they're pretty well patternless. They're quite cool looking. Um, some of them do have a few spots. As you can see, this one has maybe one on its body. Also, sorry for the little yellow stain. I was doing some cooking and turmeric gets under there. It stains. <laughs> it's kind of gross, so sorry about the fingernail. Um, but yeah, and that stripe you can see down the back is actually the intestinal tract, the stomach. So it's the food they've been consuming. Hey, you're not going to eat me, alright? Nice try. 
try to give me a little taste or a little nibble. So there are several of these in here. Um, they're doing really well. Also, it's going to be really cool to culture this form. There's also a milk back, which is sort of like just whitish back and not the rest of the body, which would be neat. But I felt like I wanted the most extreme forms of each morph. I didn't go with those. So Porcilio Lavis, white. And then, so lastly, of course, we have the Porcilio Lavis dairy cows, which are all in here, doing quite well. Uh, you see some chalkiness there because I gave them some calcium um, carbonate supplement just to give them an amping. And yeah, these are also a hobby classic. You can see that I do have a few individuals with reduced patterning, so you could technically mix those in with uh, the uh, whites, but I'm not going to do that because it will sort of pollute, if you will, the perfection of that morph because it is, at the end of the day, not fully... Uh, missing pattern. Yeah, they're really great. Um, no matter how popular this species gets along with the Maculatum Lavis and particularly the Lavis dairy cows are one of my favorite isopods to keep. They're super hardy, they breed like super well and they're a lot of fun to keep. They get to be a nice size too and they're so variable of course. So, the dairy cows. Next up, we have my Porcilio Scaber Lavas, and these are a really cool morph. You can see right away that the females um, have a calico-like red brindling expression, whereas the males, supposedly, for the most part, don't. So if I turn this over, you're going to see right away that there are some really cool colors going on here. And they're pretty neat looking. Beautiful expression of color. Hello. So they're just another neat morph or form of Porcilio Scaber. There's quite a few mankai hanging out back here, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen lots of them. Yeah, there we go. They hide in the soil and leaves. They have some cuttlefish bone. They're doing fantastic. Very similar but much smaller in size. Here we have the Porcilio Scaber oranges, which are very vibrant and quite beautiful. Look at that little cute man guy. Go, go, go! You can see all the springtails, a little bit of cuttlefish bone for them to get their calcium. Give them a gentle spritz and close the lid. Perfect. Next up we have one of my favorite species, Porcilio spatulatus. You can see a few youngins hiding already. These are a beautiful isopod. Not so much for their color, but their appearance. Sort of a nice wide-bodied animal. It's a young juvenile. And here you have a larger animal, and a few more juveniles. They seem to be doing quite well. I've heard a lot of people uh, have, have a challenge getting this species to thrive, which I find interesting because some of those same people are doing so well with the Bolivari and not so well with these. I've heard it from multiple people, and I don't know what I'm doing that I seem to be doing great with these and not with the Bolivari. It's just weird, you know? I guess everybody has their thing. But yeah, these guys are doing really great, as you can see. Lots of them. I mean, this started from a culture of 10 back in September, so there you go. That's kind of the evidence that they're happy. They're, they're breeding, they're doing okay. Yeah. Can add some cabbage to this and give the uh, moist side a little spritz. Beautiful. Next, we have a lovely species, the Porcilio Hassi Lights. 
Here you can see one cruising around. This is a light form Hassie, so the body is lighter and less dark with the yellow. Um, these guys are really cool. They're actually a decent size isopod as well. Get to be pretty big. And they have some beautiful coloration as you can see. They're like, oh, gotta get out of the light. I'll help you. A few more hanging out, some molts. Gorgeous animals. Let's move on to the other Hassies I have. Next we have the giant form Porcelio Hassi. These are a lot lighter in coloration, but they supposedly get significantly larger than the rest. Here you have one lovely animal that just recently molted. You can see the bottom half of the molt. I will gently place that wood back down so it's not disturbed. There we go. Here's where the gang's hiding out. Lovely isopods. Hopefully they do really well. They have been so far. Anybody over here? Oh, hi. Porcilio Hassi Giants. Next we have the sort of unknown form of Porcilio. I believe they're scabers like a light form scaber. Essentially these ones are sort of like the orange koi. Um, you can see them there. So they were orange and then they got reduced coloration and you just have little like blotches of orange left on the animals. I believe that I got some invaders in here so I'll probably remove them before they get to any sort of breeding size. I don't want them screwing up this really cool culture by interbreeding with them and losing the trait. So, but yeah, they're really neat little animals. Some of them don't have any orange, other ones have a bit left over still. I might try experimenting and breeding these guys to the uh, orange Lavis and see what we come up with. Maybe a bit more orange expression, that'd be neat. We'll see. So, Porcilio species, possible scaber. So next up we have a species that I've always wanted. Um, this is the Porcilia Uh They're very wide and they're really neat looking isopod. It's a darker form. I was very fortunate to be given a few juvenile individuals to try out by one of the isopod breeders that I purchased my animals from. So I have a few. And they seem to be doing pretty well so far. Haven't noticed any losses. I was told to keep them the same way that I keep my spatulatus. So, lots of decaying wood, a moist side and a dry side. Um, and, yeah, so far, they seem okay. So, we'll hope that that stays that way. And, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on how they do. But check them out. Very neat little isopod. They're very wide and round, as I was saying. And they get to be a decent size. Hello. Where are you going? Gently set that down. A little bit of cabbage over there. Gentle spritz on the moist side. Just a few enclosures that I feel need a little spritz. And there we go. Beautiful. Porcilio Warneri. Next up we have the Porcilio Hoffman Seggies. These guys are doing good. I noticed a female carrying Mankai in her marsupium. Um, Hopefully they're going to drop soon. The juveniles from the last video have grown so much as you can see. They're almost as big as the adult. And um, yeah, the culture seems to be doing okay. I had a few random adult losses. I'm not really sure what happened. But the babies have sort of made up for it. And everyone else seems stable now. Like They're all doing okay. So hopefully we have nothing more to worry about with those guys. 
see a nice large male there. These are arguably the largest species of isopod you can uh, get right now that's being cultured in captivity. So, very cool. Very, very cool. We'll see if there was a female here that looked like she was ready to pop any time. That might be her over here. Anywho, don't want to disturb her more than I just did. And I will put their piece of wood back and let them carry on with their lovely little lives. A little spritz. And we're good. Now, these guys again, pretty bone dry as you can see off on this half. And then this area, I, I add some moss and keep it a little moister. And then the screen part, if you've noticed in my videos, uh, where the dry side is, is where I have my screen half or portion. There's more ventilation and it dries out more quickly. Porcelio Hoffman Segi. Lastly, we have my pretty small culture of Porcelio Silvestri. These are really neat looking isopod with some cool color expression I was hoping to culture. Uh, we have one over here um, and then another up here. These guys took a bit of a beating. I think I had ordered 10 and maybe 3 or 4 arrived dead. But I think I still have enough to have thrive and get going. Oh, there you go. That's what you kind of want to see with this species. They'll look like that. Nice dark color with the black uh, head and tail. So, yeah, hopefully these ones will do good. There you go. Alright guys, so the last species I'm going to show you in this video are my Trichonicidae species Costa Rican purple. These are very small species of dwarf isopod. Uh, you can see one of them right there in the substrate. That's, that's literally how teeny tiny they are. And they're really cute. They have some nice color, they breed really well, they make an excellent cleanup crew. So, them along with the dwarf whites, which I have several of as well, I maybe should have bothered showing them in the video, but figured if anything, a lot of people already have those and they're sort of less interesting. I shouldn't say, they are very cool, like they're parthenogenic and everything, but these are the little Costa Rican purples. All right. But yeah, so once these guys get a little more uh, jiggy with it, let's say, and breed more readily, I will be moving them into a larger culture size bin, which applies to all the species. Okay guys, so really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to see all the species of isopods I'm currently culturing. If you enjoyed my video and you'd like to see more isopod content, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already yet and you'd like to support my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. It means a lot to me. And let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite species of isopod and out of the ones I already have. And if there's a species of isopod you'd like me to get next that I don't have, I'd love to take your advice and see if I can get it. Thanks so much for watching guys, see you all in a video soon.